Okay, today we're going to have a look at the Cartrain Hybrid Electric Vehicle Trainer, what you get when it's delivered to your school, what's inside all the boxes, and how to set it up. So Chris, I'm going to bring the first box in. I'm coming. So oh. depending on what you order, you might get a number of these. Today we've got three different boxes to go through. So we're going to open them all up, see what's inside, and what we can do to get it set up. So what we've got in this one is the trolley that we'll use. So you might not get the trolley in every delivery, so you might not have bought the trolley, but it comes separately, all built up in its own crate like that. Yes, so you don't have to set up everything or anything here, just take it out and the trolley is ready to go. Now, I'll just bring the camera up and have a look. Now, we're going to reuse these boxes, so we're not going to destroy them. But uh, normally, by all means, if this is uh, coming to your school, just open the box up, cut it down the sides, and make it a little bit easier. So we'll take out all of the components. All right, guys. So we have now taken everything out from the first box. Let's have a look what was inside. Except the obvious, of course, the table, we had also a couple of other boxes. So Daniel, will you start with the first one? Sure. So we've got a monitor holder right here, which go into the aluminium profiles that get put onto the side. Speaking of the aluminium profiles, that are <coughs> these two. So we have to unpack them and then they go to that side and that side of the table. And to that aluminium profile, like I said before, you have the frame for the charging station, which will be directly mounted at this profile. In this box, you have the whole documentation. So all of the books explaining how to build all the stuff, um, operation manuals or instruction manuals for the equipment. Everything will be found in here as well. Done. Also, what's there importantly is the software that you use for the e-learning. Okay, that means it doesn't come on a CD, you get it on a flash drive. So make sure that you take the flash drive to a safe place. In the worst case, if it should go lost, we will be able, of course, to send you a new installation. But just make sure that you keep that flash drive. So let's have a look at the last box over here. And what you find in here is like... The power cord, country specific, of course, so this is obviously for the US. Some bolts. And that's it. So pretty easy, like I said. So these are the things which are there as well. And that's everything what's inside the first box. And that really depends on what you've ordered, which what you'll find. Yours might vary somewhat. Okay, for the next box, let's have a look. Here we go. Okay, so this box here has a lot of the accessories in there, plus also uh, a table. So again, your system might come exactly like this, but packed a little bit differently according to how much equipment you've got. Just make sure these things are all additional. So that means you can have it if you have ordered it, but of course, if you just have ordered the car train, your, your box will be much more empty, for example. So what Daniel's taking out there are basically, um, this is additional equipment set, which are the, yeah, how would you describe it? That it's are the, the bollards, the um, buffer zone that you exactly. make an electric vehicle. So they are yellow and black, and with these one you can create a buffer zone around the car train, or you can use them, of course, even for, the, for your real vehicle. Number of warning signs as well yeah. if they've been ordered. 
absolutely. Very good ones, they are magnetic and can be stick to any magnetic surface. Don't be surprised if you find an empty box that's just to take up some room so that the things don't shift around. Absolutely. So as next, I give it to Daniel. This is an isolation mat where you can put like critical components on from the battery, for example, or if you are working in a surface or in an environment where you have um, or where you're exposed to electrical stuff, there you can put it there and make uh, sure that you can't touch it. Another interesting use is people put it over live parts when you're working on the electric vehicle. For example, yeah. So the next one, so here are two in it, for example, because this is um, delivery for two different car trains. So and they, the customer ordered for each car train the corresponding product. Okay, and this is... Hello. Daniel gave me the um, funny name for it. What's the official name? Not high voltage the, disconnection tool. The technician disconnect tool. Technician disconnect tool, exactly. Okay. All right. Can you I get that box out or is it? Another uh, empty box. Ha. Gloves, if you've ordered them as well. Exactly. So these are the US version, for example, and they come with the rubber and leather gloves together. There's something in? Mm hmm Nice. Here we go. Expanded safety for hybrid electric vehicles, says on here. It's like Christmas. Ah, okay. Uh, face shield and helmet. Together with the baklava. Balaclava for Balaclava. those who don't speak <laughs> German. <laughs> baklava sounds like something you buy for a Greek dessert. Okay. And we can see here, still a few other bits and pieces down there as well. Okay. Monitor holder. Another again. monitor holder. Okay for the table here. So then, just... It really is like Christmas. Take it. So here we can see safety box. No, that's the safety box. The measurement device, so insulation tester, and also the safety box. Exactly. And then finally, our charging station. So it depends on the country, of course, where you order it. You will have another power supply or power cable, power cord. So this is um, again the US version over here. And this one is ready to use and can go then in the frame which we have shown before. There you can directly put it in and then you have it always together with the car train. Here we can see as a backup the software that comes on CD as well. Perfect. So all the other stuff which is in here it's again has to do with the table, it's exactly the same like before, just the second table basically for this order. just fight the car train there but also what I see here now for example lockbox 
measurement tools, here are another pair of gloves, and all this additional stuff. Like we said before, this always depends on what you have ordered. Okay, so we're going to have a look now at putting the table together. So the table should have come together like this right here, with the drawers already connected, with the sides, the feet, and the wheels on. Notice that there's quite a few other components. There's some side pieces to put down the sides here that we connect to the car train. But in order to make them fit, there's a couple of bits and pieces that we'll need to do to prepare it. It's all explained in the operator's manual that you get, um, but this is just an idea as well. There's a couple of tools, a couple of pins here, a couple of little things to look out for. I'll just bring these a little bit closer to the, the camera. But you can see here there's some burrs on the ends of these pins. You've got four pins. You can see there's burrs going up to halfway. You need to make sure that they go down. And that makes sure that they stick into this part of the table as opposed to the, the top part. Because there is times where you might need to take the, the car train off. And so that just makes sure that they slide off. Some of the tools that you'll need. Um, the tools, there should be some Allen keys or hex keys that are supplied with the, the equipment. Um, but just so you know, there's a couple. There's a, a 4 millimeter uh, hex, 6 millimeter hex. A good large Phillips head would probably also be handy. And a hammer. Probably best to use a soft face hammer um, for what you need to do here as well. So couple of things that we can do with the, the table now. Like I said, you've got the pins there. So the first thing we're going to do is just move them down a little bit. You want to move them down to about halfway so that the burr is no longer visible. They don't have to go all the way in. Also notice there's some connecting strips as well. So they slide into the aluminium profile here, down the sides, and this is where you'll need the four millimeter hex. What I find best is if you go down below where you need to go, so slide these down on the outside ones, and just tighten one up, so it's just below the level of the the aluminium profile here. Once we get the, the sides on and connected, we will connect them up as well. So we do the same to the other side. Now, the other thing you need to see about the, the aluminium profiles that we got here, or aluminium profiles, is you'll see that there's recessed holes on one side of the, the profile here. On this side, there's none. On that side, you've got four cutouts, and that's so the heads of the bolt fit inside there. So they need to go on the outside. Now, the profile might need to have a little bit of persuasion to go on there as well. This one's going on all the way, but um, Sometimes just due to the paint that you find on the system as well, it might need to go down a bit. So again, using the soft face hammer, make that go down a little bit. I'll just spin the table around a little bit just so you can see now what I need to do with the connectors. So the little connecting strips that I was talking about before, now I bring them up so that they're halfway across the gap and tighten up both sides there. If you've got three connectors like I have, great. If not, two is also more than enough. So that's that side there done now. You also have these connections, but we'll leave that off for now. So they, they're just the, the top plates that go on there. Plastic, we'll leave those out. Also, depending on the type of power 
uh, extender that you've got here, you should get these little connectors as well that allow you to connect that to the sides of, this, of the aluminium profile. So this is where the Phillips head comes in handy. So I'll just come up closer again. This little profile will slide down into the gaps of the aluminium profile. So I'll put it down the side here. And even if you've got something in place, you can slide it down there like that into place. But if you've already got the something in the way, you can always put it in after as well. Just spin it around, undo it first. And then when you up, try to do it up again, the way that the, the system, the way that the locking nut on the back here will lock into place with the aluminium profile. So that's that point there. With this one here, I'm going to leave that off for now because we've got the power connection on the back of the car train. So I'll leave this one off. We'll clear the desk and then we'll lift the car train into place. Okay, the system here is quite heavy. So always get at least two people, might even need three people, but when you're lifting it up, make sure and um, the holes to line up okay with the, the second side piece you can now put that in place might just need to give it a another gentle tap now the important thing is here is to make sure that you get the the holes lined up and again you might need some help just to make sure, because you really don't want to cross thread these. If you've got the optional extra charger, charging station and the holder for it, that's also quite easy to fit. So that's the reason why we left the, the plastic caps off of the aluminium profile for now. You can put it on either side depending on whatever works for you and your arrangement in the workshop or the class. I'm going to put it down on this side and with the cap off you can slide that down in place to where you want it. And with the four millimeter hex, again, you can just put that in place, tighten those up, they'll self tighten. That's good to go. And then to put the charging station, put the top in first and let the bottom sit in place. And that's all you need to do. Now, once you've got all the other components in place, go ahead and put the black caps in. Again, just give them a gentle tap. And your car train system is completely ready to go. One thing to, to look for with the drawers here as well, you have the lock in place. To lock all of the drawers and with the drawers that you have you can only open one drawer at a time and that's a safety feature that we've designed especially for this table once that's done table is good to go and you can start working on the car train Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just have a look now at the package which directly belongs to the car train. We have opened it already and you should start with the packing list. So on this list you will see everything what's inside this box and which is necessary or belongs to the car train in order to get it operating. 
let's put that here. First, we start with our very fundamental ones. So we have two pair of keys or two boxes of keys here. The one package here with these kind of keys, then you will show it to you. It's for the fault box or for the, for the um, failure box. So you can put it in there. Exactly. Open, close it. And the other key, you have always a spare one, goes directly to the ignition. And there you can later on then start the car train with it. Good point would be to split up those keys so that you've got two sets, keep one um, safe somewhere else. Exactly, absolutely. Next thing is, there you see the bridge connectors. You have two orange ones, which are obviously in contact with the high voltage system of the training system and the white one. And this goes hand in hand with the overlay mask over here. So I just give that to Daniel. Here we have a pair of overlay masks. Basically, the overlay masks refer to the hybrid drives. They go there and they refer to the hybrid drives, electric drive and fuel cell drive over there. And you have even a normal combustion one. So you can see with the breakout box as it is, it's got uh, all of the different combinations. And whenever we put an overlay mask on, it then puts the selection that you have for that particular type of vehicle down. So in this case, we have an electric vehicle. And we can see here on the side, there was a, a choice of bridge connectors that we can put in. That's like the coding for the type of vehicle. When we put that on there, we only have one choice. The white plug goes in here and the two orange plugs go in here to connect the battery. Perfect. So then this is ready to go basically, but there's even another thing missing on the car train which is obviously the high voltage plug. So right now it is a training system. You do, not be, you do not need to be worried that this is now dangerous putting that plug in because the whole system is completely deactivated. So we haven't put the power cord to the trainer. In that case, it's absolutely not dangerous and you just can put it there with your hands. You, don't, you do not need gloves. In that case, when you put it into operation, Later on, of course, always wear gloves if you touch that component. One thing to have a look at when you're installing that, there's a little extra connector on one of the sides here, and that aligns with the little wire coming out. That's the interlock for the service disconnect. So make sure we put that on on that side. You can push that in, make sure it's entirely in. That gives the mechanical lock for the, the high voltage connections, and then need to push down on the connection there like that as well. That's very important because we have often seen it that uh, people just have done the first step and then they wondered why the car didn't or the training system didn't go to ready mode. When you will start the system by not having engaged the uh, um, switch completely, then you will get a fault message in the OBD or in the fault memory of the trainer. Next point on that as well, let's have a good look at the emergency stop. You can simply turn that around. When it's from the factory, it's one of the things gets tested to make sure that the emergency stop works. It'll often be pushed in before you start it. So if you get a blank screen, nothing's turning on, have a look at the emergency stop. Perfect. So what else do we have in here? So we have here also a bunch of measuring cables, basically. Our three pairs, we have red ones, four millimeter, black one, four millimeters, and they are used together with the measuring interface, which you see down there. So you have four channels there, red and black, and you have even four cables here in order to connect them with the different measurement channels. And furthermore, we have here also a blue and a yellow wire, but this is not a normal four millimeter one. This is a four millimeter to two millimeter, and that's used for? So overall, you can see a CAN bus connections as well. They're We've deliberately made those two millimeters so there's no way to make a, a false connection between the high voltage system and the can. And so that's why they're on a different level to make sure that uh, that's understood that they're separate systems. So that means you connect the two millimeters at this side and you go with the four millimeter side to the measuring interface down here. Doesn't matter where, it will be explained in the e-learning course later on. 
Then there is of course another cable and that's the USB cable. So the USB cable is attached as well down here also at the area of the measurement interface and it's the, it makes the connection between the trainer and the computer in order to use the measuring interface and make a connection between the e-learning course and the trainer itself. So there's a sticker on it which says Please install the software bef before using. So that's the e-learning software that comes with it and that installs all of the drivers to use all of the virtual instruments that Chris was just talking about. So the oscilloscope, the, the measuring devices, all can be done internally on the device using your PC, but you need to install the software and we'll show you how to do that as well. Exactly. Software is a good point, but that would be the next step. Normally you will find as a backup more or less a CD where the particular e-learning course is on and where you can install that on any Windows computer. Obviously it needs a CD drive, but there's also what we will see later opportunity to get the flash drive as well for all those computers which do not have a CD drive anymore. So you have to install the software but before, before you connect the hardware to the computer. So what else do we have here? Very important, the power cord. So the power cord is a special one here so you cannot just use a normal power cord as you know it from different other components or systems. It goes in here so you have to connect it up here and then the other side of the power cord is of course specific for the country where you're in. So this one is obviously the US version here but of course in different countries we will have different power cords. Then, then you'll, you know what this is? That'll be the charger cable. So I just open it here. So this cable always comes with the trainer together, just that you get an idea of it. It could vary in the color. So this now is black and white, but it also can happen that it's orange black, green black or whatever. Doesn't matter, it's always the same cable, just the outward or the outward appearance is a little bit different. So in this case we have also a type 1 to type 2. So why is that the case Daniel? So the unit that we've got here is a US version so we've got a type 1 charger here. For our other variants of this system we'll have the type 2. So in other words there'll be the different type of connector here. So the charging um, can be specified for the country. So according to whatever charger that you normally have on the vehicle you'll see here, which will go then to the charging device that we also have with the system. So and this is an a original charging cable. You could also use that one for your training vehicle together with the charging station, for example. Um, yeah, like I said, this is like standard industry one and you can use it everywhere you need it, basically. So last thing which we have in here is our router. So this router is pre-configured. That means you just take it out, plug it in, and then it, you will see a special car tray, a special uh, Wi-Fi. The name is printed on the front here, for example. So this is, as an example, called CT for car train 6X. So 6X is basically the article number over here. You can connect with this Wi-Fi, and in the e-learning course, there it's described how you can connect your smartphone, for example, or your laptop with a router in order to get access to that content of the touchscreen. So there's actually something down the corner that you can't quite oh, see from where exactly. you are. So what we have here are some fuses as well, and Daniel can show you where they go. So there are fuses here. I've never actually seen the need for those to be replaced, True. but we supply them um, as part of the delivery anyway. Okay, so that's the, again, according to, this is the, the base system that you get. All of the other components that you get might be as an accessory. You might have, you might not need to buy the, the barrier, the safety barrier, the gloves. You might have all that yourself. So depending on what you've ordered is what you get. But this here is the base unit that we have. Exactly. And the next step then will be to put the system into operation.
Okay, so now we're ready to go basically to get the car train started and to put the car into ready mode. First off, we have just booted the principal start sequence of the system. So there you go. Of course, you need the power cord connected and then you just push the green button over here and the system will start. Like Daniel said before, this will only work when the emergency stop is not pushed. So make sure that you pull it outside. Yeah, when it's just pushed. So make sure that this is not the case. Then you will have up, you will have a boot sequence here, which takes like for two minutes, and you will find then this language selection screen. For now, we're choosing the English language. So then you directly jump into the car. So you're here at the dashboard, but everything is dark. So it's like now a full digital dashboard, which you have here. But of course, the car is not started. The ignition is not activated. So it will just be black. Before we activate that, we will just have a look of what else we find here on the front panel of the car train. First of all, very close to the dashboard over here, like we said before, we have our ignition key, which you can turn around. Basically, then you see how it will start. You have the vehicle speed, so it simulated the speed. And of course, you have like the terrain type where you can go. So this is uphill, flat terrain and downhill. On the left side here, you have an external output. This goes hand in hand with the router, which you also find inside the box, what we have described before. And just use the patch cable, which is part of the router box, and connect the router with the external output. And how you go on then, you will see inside the e-learning course. If we follow up the structure over here, so here we get the shape of the actual car which you have chosen. Like we did before, we have here the electric vehicle, but it also can be another one out of these five different drive types over here. Important what you have to do, connect the two orange bridge connectors and of course put the bridge connector which is related to the output here of the overlay mask. And furthermore, we have here our high voltage battery simulation for the state of charge. So that means if you go to the very left, you have like a state, a state of charge of 1%. If we go to the very right, it's like 99% of a state of charge. Over here, like we before, you see the lockable fault box basically. But this is separated into three different parts. On the left side here, we have five different faults. If you want to start up the system, make sure all the fault switches are set to zero. On the right side, there here are two different switches, which are a little bit yeah, separated from the other ones. They don't have to do anything with faults. The upper one is for the internal charger. So we have real batteries on that system, which you see down here. So these are the four batteries which are connected in series and all together they are creating the output voltage. But as these are real batteries, they, they need to be charged from time to time. There's also a charging instruction which comes together with the car train. But just make sure after you've used the batteries or after you've used the car train that you activate the switch here to one so that the charging function is activated in the system. Little smart hint here, if you run out of the batteries run flat, but you need to use the car train, you can activate the charging and this will somehow bypass the batteries. So that's just an emergency solution if you have to use the car trains, but the batteries are flat. Just do that when you really need to do it. Otherwise, always make sure that you charge the batteries after you've used the car train. Down below the charging, switch you will find a switch which is called MU. So this MU stands for measuring unit and with this switch you can activate obviously that measurement unit down here. This is standardized set to one of course because we want this system to be activated. If you put that to zero then you can't use the measuring unit and the whole measuring unit will be out of order for that time. And this third part, like Daniel said before, we have here down three, uh, six different 
fuses there, which you can or which you should check if they are okay if the car train doesn't start. Coming from that lockbox over here down to that put, uh, to that region down here. So we started here already with the batteries, which we have here. Right beside the batteries, we have our high voltage service plug, and right beside the service plug, we have our inspection points. So this is basically a cover here, protected by an interlock, where you have the high voltage measuring points underneath. So they are part, or you will open the cover if you do the high voltage shutdown procedure in order to make sure that the high voltage is really gone. Like we always said before, don't worry about this, that this could be dangerous. Everything is specially student safe and protected. And as soon as you open the clap, the system will shut down anyway and you will get a fault message. But that also means when you want to start the car train, make sure that the bolts are really tight. So that's nothing loose here because otherwise the interlock will be engaged or will be interrupt and you will get the fault message and you can't start the training system. So this is locked. As well what needs to be really locked and put on is the 12 volt battery. So this is our minus terminal of the 12 volt battery. We have here a fast switch which can be released very quickly. So when you go like that you have interrupt the 12 volt botnet, but you just can put it on, press it down, and then connect it. And you see that's really tight. Like I said, this is also very important. Otherwise, without the 12 volt battery, you're not able to activate the car or to put it into ready mode. For the charging selection or for the char charging area, just make sure that the charging switch is set to off as long as you do not want to charge the system and just make sure that's not part of the interlock or anything but just make sure that the clap is closed here as well. So before we start the system let's have a quick look at the drivetrain, the real drivetrain of that trainer. So what you see here are two real three-phase electric motors. Very often we got asked the question, is that really three-phase because we just see two cables over here? Yes, it is. So we have the three-phase cable integrated into that one cable over here. So in that orange cable, there are three phases running. The other one, which you can identify as a gray cable, is the resolver. So this is also goes hand in hand with this area over here, where you have the resolver split it up in cosinus and sinus. And this is where you can measure the real resolver which is working on these two electric motors. Very important, don't mix it up with the overlay mask here. Of course, when we are talking about the different hybrid drives, we have like a motor generator 1 and a motor generator 2. But in that case, you can't compare that with these two ones. What we have done here, why we need two electric motors, is pretty easy to answer because the right one is the actual drive one, so this, this is a driving the wheels. The other one is just used in order to create a torque when you simulate the driving down the hill. So this is very important for the recuperation. When we driving down the hill, the motor generator 2 acts, or the right one, acts like a generator. So it need, but it needs then another torque which has an influence on this electric motor in order to drive the wheels and to drive the generator over here. And this is done by the first, uh, first motor over here, which you see on the left hand side. Okay, so we're going to have a look at installing the software. In this case, I'm going to use the USB stick that was supplied. Simply just put that straight into your laptop and it'll come straight up to the file. So you'll see that there's the, according to the products that you have purchased already, will come on here. If you've got a number of different products, they will all be installed on the CD or the uh, flash drive like this. All you need to do in this case though is just click setup and that will install the system as required. So just let it go through. It'll install all the drivers that you need. It'll ask you which version, so which, which language version. So a lot of these courses will come in different languages. 
If you have students that might speak other languages, you can install those languages as well. Go through, custom setup. Basically the best way is just to let it go through and install where it wants to. So as that's going through, we'll let that install. And in the meantime, I'll come over to the unit and just show you how to get that started. So Chris just showed you all of the features of the unit and now we'll have a look at how to get the unit started. So we've seen that the, the ignition key was here and it's a three position ignition key. So first position will be like accessories or ignition. And then we need to take it to the start position to get it going further. That'll go through the preload phase and get the system into ready mode. So you've seen that there, it said preload. Obviously you don't see that on a real vehicle, but this is a training device. So it's to tell the students what's going on in the background. So once the system in, is into ready mode, we can now begin to have a look around. We can take the system for a drive, you can see here, and we can see how it reacts according to the speed that we set on the speed dial. can have a look here, this is also a touch screen. So we can have a look on the center console of the unit. And you can see here now the energy flows. And that will be, that will change according to what setting we have and what sort of vehicle we have. So if we have a hybrid with a generator on board, or in this case, we just have an electric vehicle. So I've set it to going downhill. So it's kind of like regeneration. So we can see the green arrows are going back into the system generating electricity, whereas if we're going uphill and need to expend energy, you can see the red arrows are showing that energy is being used. You can see here, also as Christian mentioned before, the state of charge of the battery, in this case is at 15%, and we can change that by adjusting the dial within the the breakout box or the block diagram that we have over here. So you can see, as Christian mentioned, goes between one and 15%. We don't see that with an electric vehicle, but once you get below a certain threshold on a hybrid vehicle, that will uh, cause the generator to switch on. What you also see on the system here is a, a little OBD2 connector down in the bottom corner. This here is also quite handy for finding out what version you have. So if you ever need to get in contact with us about some help, we might ask you for the information that you find on the scan tool here. You will also find some buttons over on the right hand side here. We have one called actual values. The actual values goes through what the parameters are, it's like the PIDs essentially within the system as you have it right now. So adjusting the battery state of charge will be reflected within the scan tool here as well. Voltage at the DC link, voltage at the traction battery. So what we have here is the traction battery is four 12 volt batteries. So we use the batteries here as a buffer for the energy that we need so either to, to drive the motors, but also as a buffer during regeneration. So we needed real batteries in this case, but to drive the motors, the motors are actually at 300 volts, three phase. So here, and we'll do some measurements later, we'll see here there's actually 300 volts on the, at the inverter, that's called the DC link. And we can see that here, traction battery is at 51.5 volts, and the DC link is at 340 volts. You can, all, can also see the proximity pilot voltage, which is the PP voltage within the charger here is at 4.7, that'll change if you put a cable on there. Down the side here, you can see some indicator lights telling you that the interlock is okay for the high voltage measurement point and also at the service maintenance plug if I just remove one of those quickly, again, normally do this sort of thing with gloves, but just to show you, 
you can see now the interlock at the service plug has been interrupted. And in this case, it's back again. What that also does, we can now see that there is a fault within the system, obviously, because I just opened the interlock. So I need to go back into the system and I can see here that we have an interlock fault showing up. Now, we don't want to overload the students with so much information like you would find on a real vehicle. So we're really just breaking it down to the information that they need. So it's showing you here, high voltage service lock, sorry, high voltage interlock circuit, circuit at the service plug. I've put it back in place now, so I can reset that and there's no faults present. Go back into scan tool, actual values. And I'm going to start the system up and you can see here, it'll cycle through the pre-charge relay, high voltage plus relay, high voltage minus relay. That's the system main relays that are, that are switching on the high voltage system. So that gives you a good overview of the entire system that you see here, everything that you need to get the system operational. If I have a look now, my Labsoft has also installed. So going through, I can now click finish. And if you have a look down in your search bar for a program called Labsoft X, you can open that up. And for this here, you can just put any name. You don't have to put a password in at this stage. It's completely open, it'll work without it. And it'll bring up all of the different versions of car train, uni train, truck train that you might have. This is a program that is the same across all Lucas Nuller products. So it doesn't matter what you have, it will all be the same. So I now unplug my USB, put my USB cable from the device in here. Click OK. On this case, automotive curriculum. One thing that you can see here is that the menu is over on the right hand side. If you prefer to have it over on the right hand side, you can simply, this is the first time that you use it, simply grab the, the top of the menu here, drag it over to the middle of the left hand side, you can see a little arrow there, and it'll pin itself to the other side. Now all of a sudden, we have our Labsoft and the system connected together. What we also have within the Labsoft, if you ever disconnect the USB, the system might need to look for its connection on its own all again. So if you have a look up in here, it's going to give us a menu with instruments and we can go down to connection. I can select reconnect USB and the system will connect back up again. So the reason we need that connection, as we said before, is we have the oscilloscope function, voltage sources such as a function generator, voltmeter, amp meter, and a dual voltmeter, all included on the system. So now that we have our connection, you can see here, now it's connected over USB and we're set to go. Okay. So, now after we have shown how the car train works and how we get it into ready mode, we will now have a look at Labsoft or more concrete at different experiments and also at the fault simulation. We will start with the experiment where we are using 
the multimeters, so the virtual instruments which we have shown before inside the laptop section of that video. The system is already in ready mode, so we are good to go. So I directly jump on the page now where we do the experiment. So the first experiment is in the section battery systems and the typical voltage levels and the experiment is called measuring the voltage level. So how we see now the experiment page is always set up the same way and it's very easy to follow. You will start with some hints and some yeah, information and then you come to the section preparing the experiment. So uh, preparing the experiment tells you basically what you have to do in text form but also inside uh, setup animation. So when we click that you will see you have to set up a certain overlay mask, put in the bridge connectors, turn on the ignition so it will tell you where you have to go. Basically you have to go to ready mode in that example and then you're good to go. If you have to measure something this will also be shown in here and this is what we do now. So we now need two channels of the measuring instrument and connect it with the four millimeter wires. This is what we do now here. So our first cable, channel one, red and black. And we connect the first one to the battery down here. So here we go on the right side with a black cable and on the left side with the red cable. The second channel now, same procedure. Here we go, red and black and now we connect it to the DC link so that's the thing what Daniel explained beforehand and what we directly find at the middle of the inverter so now our setup is fine and we can go on if we go on we come to the section where we say carry out the experiment and there we see now we have the two voltmeters and how we have to set up them in order to measure the right value we have two possibilities here. We can either click in on instruments like we've seen before and open under measuring devices the voltmeter A and B or we just can go here and click on the picture and then channel A or voltmeter A will open as well as voltmeter B. Now we see already some values here but first we have to make sure that we switch it to the right adjustment or just set, set it straight up. So the first one should be range 200 volt, uh, 100 volt, sorry, RMS and DC measurement. And we see we measure now a voltage around about 51 volt. So that's basically like again the battery voltage down here. The next one should be set up to 400 volt RMS DC. And there we see now we have a measure value of 226 volt. So this is what happens now at the DC link over here inside the inverter. This is also what we call the buck boost converter, which you, for example, find at the hybrid synergy drive of a Toyota drive system, for example, in the Prius. So that means the voltage is boosted from 50 volt to more than 300 volt over here. And this is now a very nice measurement where we show that absolutely student safe and we are not or not running into the danger of yeah putting someone into danger or that you are could destroy something everything like I said is absolutely student safe here and nothing can happen to the student and now within seconds we have done this measurement and with these values we can now fill in the questions which come later so for example we put the first question we measure now 51 the DC link is 226. So when we now go to check answers, we see then that both values are correct. Very nice. So then there are further questions. So evalu evaluation of the experiment, which we also then go, can go on uh, to answer it. Like we also explained before in the laptop section, you can read in the solution file but of course that only should do the teacher account and there then you uh, see all the right experiments but also the right oscilloscope pictures. So speaking of the oscilloscope pictures will be the next experiment. There we will have a look at how to use oscilloscope.
Okay guys, now let's come to the second experiment. Now we have a look how to use the oscilloscope. And therefore we switch to the experiment high voltage build up during startup. So on the screen you see it again, same way of doing experiments like before. So the experiment page is in the same shape and looks pretty much the same. Of course, except we have a different experiment content here. Like you see now we just need channel A in that experiment and we connect this channel again to the DC link like we've seen before in the experiment. So this is already done here. We have connected two measuring cables to the DC link. If we now go further, we will see now with the experiment or carrying out the experiment that we now not using the voltmeter but the oscilloscope. And again, there are such some adjustments what we have to do to the oscilloscope in order to get the right signal. I have prepared that so you basically can click on the oscilloscope, it will open up again. I have already prepared the adjustments here. And now we see, so now you're working with the trigger. We have explained beforehand what the trigger is. It's very important in here to stop the signal in order that you see what's going on there. Further on what we have to do now is basically to bring the system into ready mode and that's what we do now with the switch and now we see what happens here on the screen. So the oscilloscope is measuring the signal at the DC link we see in the startup we see the startup and we also see then this little ripple here when the precharge relay opens and the high voltage relay, so with, without any kind of precharge resistor, is activated and puts the full high voltage on the high voltage system. We have measured that and very easy, we just go here, uh, right click, copy, get rid of that and put it in here. And now you see, very wonderful, how this oscilloscope signal is now going into the placeholder and that's pretty cool because like we explained it before this oscilloscope picture is now saved in the account of the individual user for as long as you want to and if you as an instructor want to have a look what your students have done just jump into their account and have a look at the experiment of your choice and you see what they have measured there so that's really nice and very unique possibility that you can save all of the oscilloscope pictures into the account. And of course here as well everything is followed by questions so just fill it out or read the solution file and you see what the right experiments are. All right guys so after we have done now the two experiments we go now a little bit deeper into the system what we're gonna do now is to run through a real diagnosis on an electric or hybrid vehicle. And what we do here is the insulation fault. So we will have a look what is an insulation fault and how can we diagnose it or learn what it is together with the trainer over here. First thing what we do, and this is all explained inside the e-learning course as well. So you go on the web page or you basically go onto the page of the um, course and just open the diagnostic task insulation fault into the high voltage system. You can do that either, even by clicking through the course or you can even jump to the page at the very end of the course which is called overview about experiments. On this page you have an overview about all existing experiments here and just click on the page of your desire and it will directly jump to that experiment or to this diagnostic task inside the course. So I'm now on the page of the diagnostic task. It looks like a normal experiment page, but basically what the experiment setup is showing you or showing the student is just how to set up the fault. So this is basically done by these fault switches over here. It is explained which fault switch need to be switched on. Of course, inside the animation, which the student which, uh, will see, there is no naming of the different switches like it is in here. So it just shows the position. The idea is that the student is telling the instructor which switch he needs to be activated and the instructor is doing it. Open the box, activate the switch, 
close it and get rid of the key so that no one else can open it and see what happens inside there. The further instructions on this page, there's a workshop order which is describing the experiment. So it says, for example, vehicle is still running. High, high voltage warning light is displayed. So shut down the high voltage system and carry out the diagnosis. If we go on, there are multiple questions on this page as well, but they should just help and support the student. The main task or the main intention here is to run through this diagnosis on your own with your knowledge which you have gathered by working through the course. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. We know now from the workshop order there's a problem at the car. First step of course is we verifying that problem. So let's start the car. We see when the system is switching on we see right now that there is the high voltage warning sign directly there. The system has recognized a high voltage fault inside the system but it's yellow which is telling us that there is no too serious problem. So the high voltage system is still able to operate and you can drive the car. This would be different for example if you would have a red sign over there. So the red sign would clearly show to you there is a really serious problem and you cannot start the high voltage system or respectively the high voltage system will directly shut down because there's a really serious malfunction. Luckily, lucky us, we have just here the yellow one. So let's have a look at the diagnostic tester. What we see there directly, there is a P3009 code which is telling us high voltage leak to ground at a motor generator. Okay, we know now that there is obviously an insulation fault and that we have to run through the diagnosis in order to find out what's wrong there. First thing here, especially if you do, on the, on the one hand, if you do a resistance measurement, which is an insulation measurement basically, you have to get a system which is free of voltage but anyway, if you work on a high voltage system, especially more deeper into the high voltage system, you have always to make sure to shut down the high voltage system. Under normal circumstances, never work on an active high voltage system. Especially it will shut down if you open any connection which is related to the interlock. So we start now really easy. We shut down the tester and shut down the vehicle. So the high voltage system is basically shut down now but of course we have to run through the procedure of the manufacturer. First step here is get the ignition key and put it in a safe area. Also put the warning sign somewhere at the car that still the life high or that still the high voltage is live and active and that someone is working on the car. So right now as long as we do the shutdown process, we need to have the sign up there. First thing now, how do we secure the key? Of course, we do not put it into the pocket or anywhere else. We put it in a safe lockout box where no one else can access it and where we have a clear place where we will find the components. So the key is not the only component which will go in there, as we will see later. So, key is in. Let's put that aside. Next step at the procedure, like I said, all the high voltage shutdown procedures also explain inside the course. We will have a quick, yeah, we will blend it in, in that video that you see what page we mean and how it looks like, but the whole procedure is explained here. So this is what we do now. And how we go on further is the next step disconnect the 12 volt battery. So this is where we go with our fast switch and we just disconnect the minus terminal of the 12 volt battery. So the next step would be now where we have to touch the orange high voltage service plug. Before we do that we need of course our gloves. Why is that the case? As soon as you touch an orange component put on your gloves. But before we can put on the gloves, we have to do some tests with the gloves. First thing, 
it has to have the right cat rating. It must be, or the right class even more. Sorry, not cat, cat comes later. It's a class, it's class zero. Class zero means it's okay up to 1000 volt. But it only will be okay if it's tested and if it's not too old. So the test must be not older than six months. That's okay over here. And we even have to test that there are no holes inside. So this is when we do it like that. We will have a look if we see something and also if we hear or feel something like an airstream coming out through a hole. All good here. Same we do with that one. Class zero, of course, perfect. And test date is okay. We go here. Listen, also perfect. So, what else can we do? We have also here a bunch of other stuff. Uh, what we do now is before we put on the gloves, is that we are test the multimeter over here. So this must also be a multimeter which has CAT3. I will check that. It's CAT3, 1000 volts, perfect. It's connected to measure voltage at this time. That's correct because before we measure the insulation resistance, we first have to verify that the high voltage is gone. So, and this is what we do with that one over here. So, the system or the meter is CAT3. Then we have also to check if the leads are CAT3. And here we go. That's as well CAT3000 volt, CAT3000 volt. Just a quick tip or hint. If you put any adapters on these measuring sticks, then you also measurement leads, then you also make, to sh make sure that these are CAT3000 volt. So everything in this measure line needs to have CAT3000 volt. How gonna we test this right now? So we switch it on and now we need a reference voltage. The reference voltage basically should be a DC, DC source and not any kind of power supply. Why is that the case? Because what we want to measure is a high voltage battery with DC, with DC voltage. So then also our reference voltage should be DC. And this is what we do here. We go to the 12 volt battery and here I see 12.2 12 volt, so perfect. Fine measurement value, this is what we expected. And it looks like that the system is working perfectly. This is what we call the first life measurement. So there's the rule of life, dead, life. And what we've done now, the first life measurement here. So now we have checked the gloves and we have checked the measurement tool. Now we are good to go to open the high voltage service plug or to pull the high voltage service plug and also secure it in the box. That's what I will do now. So I put on the gloves, which we have here. Then I will take the other glove above it. So these are now the leather gloves basically. So as you see here, these are recommended in many countries, but they are very important to use or that's, that's a given thing in the US, which makes totally sense because the rubber gloves can easily be destroyed. That's why I put on the leather gloves above it and just work so that you are absolutely safe. So the next step now, we pull the high voltage service plug. And this also goes directly in here. This is everything what needs to be in there. So we can close that, take a padlock. So we have here a special safety padlock and secure this box that no one else except us or the instructor, for example, can open it. And this key then can go into the pocket. So the next step is now we have to look or have a measurement at the inspection point. This inspection point is covered or is, is, is um, placed underneath that cover. And of course we have to remove the cover, but with the gloves, because as long as we have not verified that there is zero voltage at the high voltage test point, we have to assume that the high voltages are still active. So this is what I do now. 
So really try and train that with the gloves because this is what you later have to do at the real vehicle as well. And I can tell you it can even be there more nasty to get the things done with the gloves. Okay, now we go with a, with a depth measurement. We did the life measurement, now we go with a depth measurement. And we do it like that with one hand. So now you're asking why are we doing that with one hand if I have two hands? Easy to answer, another safety rule, which is called the one hand rule. If we would measure like this and there would be a serious problem, in the worst case we can close the circuit over our body and over our heart. Really bad, we should avoid that. And if we make sure that we just measure with one hand, then we are pretty sure that even in the worst case, we don't close the circuit over our body. So that's what we do here. We connect that and I see here zero voltage. Perfect. So I will finish right now. No, there's another step. And what we do right now is the last death measurement. So this is, uh, sorry, the last life measurement. Again, life, death, life. We did now the death measurement and now we, did again, we do again the life measurement in order to see that we have 12 volt here and that the measurement tool is still working. Because in the worst case, we could have blown, for example, the fuse of the measurement tool or whatever. We just make sure here that the measurement tool is still working. And this is what we have done now. And now we have verified that the high voltage is gone and the high voltage system is really shut down based on the manufacturer information. And the next step now, we can take off the gloves and do the measurement for the insulation problem. After we have shut down the high voltage system, the last step is now to find out where the problem is regarding our insulation fault. We already know it's at the motor generator, obviously. So we will check that if we really find the fault over here at the motor generator. As this is, of course, electric vehicle, we just have one electric drive, which makes this a little bit more easier. So we don't have to measure through all the different electric drives. But really, let's check if the problem is there and how we find it out. So this is where we need then the insulation tester where we here use for example the fluke one and we have to go we have always to look for the nominal voltage of the system which is here around about 328 volt so the test voltage of 500 volt would be fine never use a normal ohm range or ohm measurement of a voltmeter or of a multimeter because there the output voltage is much too low and even in a faulty case or in, in a problem in a problematic case like it's like we have it here now normally the resistance the insulation system is still so high that the normal multimeter would not measure any problem or where you can't see the problem at the multimeter this is why we use that one make sure that you connect the measuring leads to the right points over here because very often they differ from the measuring points for volt or for amperage or ohm or whatever. So we go down here, insulation minus, the black one goes here and the red one goes above it. So I've put it to 500 volt and now what we want to check is we want to check between the car chassis and of course the high voltage system. So what we do here now, we go directly into the motor generator. It doesn't, make, it doesn't matter where we measure because we have a star connection here at the three phase motor. That means all the three phases are connected with each other. And we can't say right now it's a problem, even if we have some measurement, if the problem is at the motor generator, at the inverter or at the cabling. But just to make sure that, that there is a problem, we do the measurement right now. So insulation test. And there we see the problem already. So at 374 volt or 74 volt already, this uh, voltage breaks down and we just have 0 0.3 mega ohm. Follow the official rules, this is much too less. And this is why we now know that the problem is somewhere here. When we go somewhere else in order to measure, 
there we see we have above 500 volts we have still 8.3 mega ohm which is much better value of course so the problem is somewhere here and now the next step would be that you have to yeah disassemble the car take out the electric motor take out the cables and do a single measurement on the single components in order to find out what the faulty component is for the car train our diagnosis is ending here because now we have run through the generic process which you can adopt to any kind of car in order to find out where the insulation problem is and how you find out about it how do you measure it and like i said this is generic and you can carry that knowledge over to any car which you also can do with the practical task sheets so right in the course and there's also an overview page we have always practical task sheets which make the connection between the trainer and the real car and exactly these practical task, task sheets are the link between it okay guys in the meantime i've put back everything in place what we do now we remove the fault switch or just remove the fault and put the switch back to zero we start the high voltage system and put the car back to ready mode it can happen, like I said, that the fault is still there, as we see here. But there we go now into the diagnostic section and go to reset. And then the system is telling us there are no fault present and the vehicle is good to go. Okay, so we hope that that's given you a really good idea on how to get the system up, up and running and to do some of the main experiments that you might find with the system. Of course, there's so much more that you can do with the, the car train and the e-learning. There's a huge amount of e-learning that's to be covered there. We would really recommend that it's worth your time to go through that step by step, understand what's important for your training program. Maybe there's some sections that you're not really or that are not really important for your training program, you can leave them out, that's completely fine. Um, but it's important as you, as an instructor, understand what's inside that training program and that e-learning Labsoft. Yeah. There is no need to run through the whole course, especially in a chronological order. So like Daniel said, just choose the topics which are important for your training and just take the, them into the class or into your program. Nevertheless, I think we have now together good time and run through the whole course and the system so that you have a good idea. If you still have questions, no problem at all. Speak to your area sales managers and he will get in touch with us and we can directly call you, write you an email or directly get in touch with you. Anyway, have a great time. Great. Yep. Thanks very much. Hope that's helped and all the best. See you soon in your country.